Today, we want to share with you the specific strategies we use to help students on finding the exact best time for them to write the MCAT. Now, how would you find out exact best time for you? That's very important. It's not about the best time for some random person that you know. It's not about the best time for your friend. It's about the best time for you. I'm gonna show you a little tactic that's gonna teach you exactly how to find out the, the precisely the day, the hour, the second, you know it is time to write the test. Before I do that, I'd like to introduce myself if you haven't watched any of our videos. My name is Beruz Momeni. I'm the CEO and founder here at Bima. I'm joined with our content manager, Jenia. And uh, if you haven't watched any of these, I also wanna explain how they work. This is our one question podcast. We take one topic, we dissect it, slice it any possible way we can. We give you the best information. Uh, and you know, if you're on the fence at all, don't worry, we have nothing to sell you in these videos. It's just free content. We don't wanna sell you anything. This is just part of our mission to teach you the same information we learn uh, in our own uh, consultation. So you get the same benefit our students get and be able to implement on your own. There's literally nothing to, to sell you in this video now if you like this of course uh, throughout ask your questions uh share it with a friend and of course subscribe and you'll get uh, uh, notified when we have new episodes coming up so let's go back to when to write the mcat and how you could find out exactly when is the best time to write the mcat so how will you find this out before I tell you that, maybe, why is this even important? Why is this even important? Jenny, you wanna maybe take the lead of why, who cares? Why do I write the MCAT or why X or Y writes the MCAT? Mm -hmm. It's a really good question because the MCAT might be one of the most intimidating aspects of the whole medical school application process. So a lot of students dread it and not only studying for it, but actually sitting it because ultimately the worst thing that can happen to you is that you do not do well. You do not get the score that you want to get into your chosen medical schools and you will have to retake it. Oh the repercussions God. of retaking it are quite, I would say, severe, even though quite a few students retake it. We do not want to discourage students from retaking it, but just knowing the repercussions of failing or not doing well and retaking the test should be well known to students. You're losing time. You are building stress. You're losing self-confidence. And most importantly, you will have to re-strategize your MCAT prep because if it didn't work the first time, it's not gonna work the second time. So it's quite, you know, it's quite a lot of pressure for students to know exactly when would be the best time to write. When are they ready? When is the best time of month, uh, year, you know, even day? Uh, to write their test. So I think a lot of students wonder about this question and it's really important for us to give them some tips on this. All right, so let's go to specific strategy. How can you determine this for you? Now, one is first of all about your own personal situation. Are you working not right now or are you in school? Most people are in school. Let's, let's take, take that into consideration. If you're in school, you probably want to choose a time when school is, you know, not in session essentially. So during the summer months, that kind of makes more sense for most. But I'm gonna argue that you know that that's that's not from our experience. That's not what's gonna get you the high school. That's just one piece of it. Okay, great. Let's just say you do that. Not that important though. So what is the best way to know? This is very simple. And today's video is gonna be very short because it's so simple and yet nobody wants to listen to this until they make a mistake or like, you know, somehow they've been convinced to do that the first time, good for them. Uh, you, you know, and as Jenia said, I have to emphasize about 50% of people who take the MCAT or somewhere around there, I forget the stats. So you could go look at it on AMC's website. They rewrite the test. That's crazy. Why? Half the people? 
Here's how to do it. You first, uh, we discussed in another video how to create a you know study plan for yourself. I'm not going to go into that. Assuming you've done that, uh, we're going to put the link somewhere so you could go and watch this other video as well, somewhere on this video. Assuming you've done that, you have a schedule. You're going to get to the end of your schedule. And as part of your schedule, you must be writing a simulated uh, exam every other week, if not every week. Uh, once you start feeling that you're ready, not right away. Once you start feeling you're more or less okay, then you gotta be writing it regularly. Two, these tests must be taken on the same time and day of the week, you wearing the same exact thing you plan to wear on the actual test, even having your shoes on, so that you get a simulation that's as realistic as possible. So that's the second piece. The third piece is you keep doing this and keep studying and keep going over your errors. You keep reviewing. So you keep writing. Let's say you're writing a test every week. The rest of the week, you're reviewing the errors. You're doing some more studying. You're going back. You're writing a different test, by the way, each time, obviously, a test you've never seen. And you keep doing that. When do you know you're ready? The minute you've had three independent tests. And in each of them, you got your desirable score or more. Three independent tests. So it's not a fluke. That's why I'm asking to make sure that it's three times so that you've seen different tests. Uh, for sure, you know, it's not. And it should be, uh, you know, at or above your desirable score. I would obviously put my desirable score 90th percentile or above, maybe more leave room for margin of error and the stress of test day that might bring you down. So always aim higher so that if you don't hit it, you go lower, it's still very good. That's how you know. So what happens if you don't reach that and your exam is coming? Cancel it, done, the end. You should not write a test when you're not there. What if you know, you're like, okay, it's just a month. I'm not even close. What do I do? It's my test date. I paid, who cares you paid 300 bucks? Cancel it. It doesn't matter because, you're, again, it's your brain trying to be consistent about something that doesn't make sense. The human's uh, brain is just, it always loves consistency. It loves to keep its promise, even if it's to itself. So you've set a date. Now you've become committed to that date. And you're now worrying yourself in your head about $300, $400, $500. Don't do that. The medical education is going to cost you half a million, a million dollars. $500 is nothing. Cancel. You reschedule. Oh, but what if I cancel? You know, all the other ones are booked. Who cares? Again, you're, you're just going to waste time. It doesn't matter. You should not write the test until you have scored at least 90th percentile or above three times in a row in three independent tests. The end, how long will it take? Who cares? Will I make my test date? Who cares? What if I'm going to miss this test date? Who cares? What if I cannot apply this year? Who cares? Those are the things that are so important. Once you understand this concept, and I, I'm intentionally over-exaggerating this concept so that hopefully I get a chuckle from you or be like, oh, this guy is a little bit crazy. That's okay. Because you'll remember that none of those things matter. What matters is you score high and you write that test only once because that also helps you apply to medical school most likely only once. All of those things take a lot of time and money and effort. You don't want a rejection. You don't want to uh, apply when, uh, sorry, uh, write your test when you're not ready. Like the, the motivation goes from up here. The minute you see your official scores that are crap, motivation goes down here. It's just like now trying to be like, oh, I'm going to restudy. Oh, mm, don't do that to yourself. Remember, human brain psychology always works on motivation. It rarely works on demotivators. Don't demotivate yourself. And of course, ignore all, all the haters. Don't listen to people say, oh no, you should do that, you should do this. Don't worry about that. So that would be my sort of a thing. That's why I told you, I wasn't exaggerating when I told you, I'm gonna tell you a strategy where you could find the second you could write the, the MCAT and get the score you want. Jenny, any final thoughts? Uh, the only thing I would add then, uh, you know, it's worth, adding, I think, is that that's why medical school applications and MCAT do require preparation. So, you know, if your uh, medical school application deadline is in 
June or you know July when the MCAT open, don't write the MCAT in June. You know, no just sense. just don't do it. Um, give yourself enough time. Uh, you know, we've we've made videos on uh, the best time to write the MCAT to start studying for the MCAT. So uh, do plan that ahead so that you are not only relying on that one date. So as Baru's mentioned, you can reschedule or you know cancel and uh, schedule again, something like this. So do prepare. Uh, medical school applications are not on a whim type of application. So <laughs> no do way. prepare in that regard. No way. Perfect. Thanks so much for adding that. Uh, if you enjoyed this as much as we enjoyed making it for you, go ahead and share it with a friend who may benefit. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is going to be someone who is going to have uh, some sort of a strong opinion about when to write it. So this would be good to maybe help them out or maybe they will be lost. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, ask in the comment section. We'll get back to all the questions that we're not holding back. And uh, of course, don't forget to like, subscribe so you don't miss any of our future episodes if you enjoyed this as much as we enjoyed making it for you. Thanks again so much for watching and hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Bye.